Wasn't that amazing? Amen. 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 This is uh, one of my favorite songs, The Prayer. I was listening to it when I'm just feeling like I've been disconnected. And uh, it just helps me reconnect back with God. And so thank you so much, uh, Georgian. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Uh, We've been blessed. Uh, For uh, those that are um, coming coming again uh, uh, for the series that we have been doing this week, I just want to say welcome again. Welcome back to the Finding Peace series. And uh, for those that are... uh, Come uh, visiting with us for the first time, I also want to say welcome and happy Sabbath. Uh, Today uh, we continue, we will, uh, we're going to um, have our last and final message of our meetings that we have been doing this whole week of uh, finding peace. And the peace is acronym for people enjoying a Christ-centered experience. And I have been enjoying a Christ-centered experience this week, amen? I hope you have as well. Today's message is, the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. And uh, we have been uh, using uh, this following verse as the theme verse for our messages. And the verse is found in John 14, 27, and he reads, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And as we explore the different ways that God uh, shows us how we can have peace in our lives, we also chose to look at every message this week through the lens of the verse found in 1 John 4. Eight, and the verse says, anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. And as we explore our last message, as we explore together through this last message of, of how we can have peace in our lives, I want us to keep this as our focus. Because when you think about love, When you think about love and when you love someone, you can't say that you love someone and not want to be with them. You can't love a place and never desire to visit it. When you love something or someone, your deepest desire towards it or them is to be near them. I remember when I started dating my fiance, who's here, by the way, uh, her name is Zawadi. Uh, If you haven't met her, she's sitting right there. So uh, can you stand, actually, so people can see you? (laughs) There she is. Thank you. Thank you. I've been blessed by uh, her presence this week. She uh, flew all the way from New York uh, to come and support me uh, during this week as I uh, shared uh, these messages of finding peace. And so when, I, when we started dating about four years ago, uh, it was a long-distance relationship from the go- get-go. And so for about four years, coming up uh, in, uh, in October, uh, we have been uh, trying to make this thing work uh, while she's in New York and while I was here. And uh, part of those four years, I was also in Hawaii. And part of those four years, I was also in Nebraska. And so it seems like I've just moved further and further away from her as time, as time passed. And this is never the desire for people who are in love or for people who love each other. The deepest desire is to be close together, to be in the same place. Kind of like the wedding that's coming up here. The reason why this whole thing has been uh, put together and planned is because there are two people whose deepest desire is to be together because there's love between them. And if, so if God then is a God of love, then his deepest desire would be to be with those that he loves. Isn't that right? According to our earthly experience on what love looks like, we can also wonder 
whether or not this is true about God. Does God desire to be with those that he loves? This is what we find in the book of John, 14 verses 1 through 3. And the Bible says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to pre- uh, there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. Amen? Let's pray. Father God, we come before you this morning asking that your Holy Spirit may fill all of us. I pray that you empty us of self and fill us with your, your spirit. I pray that as we hear this uh, wonderful message of a God who desires to spend eternity with his people, I pray that our hearts may be opened to also have the same desire to be with a God who loves us. In Jesus' name, amen. So in John 14, 1 through 3, we find that it is God's greatest and deepest desire to be with those he loves forever. Amen? The Bible tells us that there is a place that Jesus has prepared for those he loves and it is in this place that he desired to spend eternity with you. I love this next verse in 1 Peter 1.4. It says, an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. I love how personal this verse is. I love how you can insert your name in this verse and claim this inheritance for yourself, amen? Because this verse, I believe, was written with you in mind. As the Holy Spirit inspired Peter to write this verse, I believe he had each one of our names in mind, saying that an inheritance, incorruptible, undefiled, and that lasts forever, is waiting just for you, amen? And when you read the word you, just insert your name in there, an inheritance waiting for John, an inheritance waiting for Irishura, an inheritance waiting for Mac, an inheritance waiting for each one of us, amen? And this is God's deepest and greatest desire to be with each one of us, to spend eternity with those that he loves. It's been so long so long since uh, the separation took place in the Garden of Eden. When God designed, because God designed us to be in communion with him. Bible's very clear, it says, men shall not live alone. Because God created us to be in communion. And not just with one another, but with him. Because the Bible tells us in uh, uh, Genesis 1:26 that uh, God created men and women in his image and his likeness. It was his desire for us to be forever connected to him, for us to be forever within the same space with him until sin came and separated us. Sin came and pulled us away from a God who desired nothing but to be with his children. But God says here that this cannot go on forever. It cannot go on forever. Because soon, soon he says that there's a place that is being prepared for each one of us. And the desire, the reason why is because God wants to once again bring back the union, the communion, the connection, the intimacy that once existed between his children and himself. In the book of 1 Corinthians 2.9, the Bible tells us, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of men the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Heaven is unlike anything you and I have ever seen. I remember when my family uh, was getting ready to come here. 
uh, I, I shared with uh, some of you on night one of some of the things that we heard about America when we first came, uh, when we were getting ready to come here. And one of the uh, just, I guess, outlandish thing that we heard uh, was that when we get here, when foreigners get to America, there's this big factory that they all usher you in. And as you enter into this factory, there's a machine inside this factory and you go through it. And on the other end, you come out as soaps. <laughs> so crazy when you, hear, when you hear it now. But I promise you back home, we took these stories very seriously. We had never been to America, and so we were just hearing these things about this place. And many people actually got terrified and uh, canceled their um, visas to come here. But of course we came and uh, we found out that that was not true. But amongst these horrible stories that we heard, there were some good stories. We heard that America was a, a place of opportunities. We heard that it was a place uh, where your dreams will come true. Uh, we heard that uh, this, also another horrible, uh, hor just crazy um, thing that we heard, that money grows on tree. And I mean, you hear this and you think it's a joke, but to us, it was real. We thought you just walk outside the house and grab a few bucks off of the tree that's planted outside your home, and you're good. But of course, that didn't turn out to be to be true but we heard that this was the land where your dreams can come true and for the most part it is true and of course even though America seems to be the place that every person would want to be the Bible is telling us that heaven is far more better than this that heaven is far more better than anything that you've imagined, any place that you have imagined. Uh, we usually see pictures of places like these, right? And uh, uh, we, our desire is to just go there, right? And uh, we see this and we experience it, and in our minds we're like, this is the best place ever. And then we see other places like these as well, and the same thing goes on in our minds. And I know each one of us can imagine uh, the, the most beautiful places that we have been at or we have seen on pictures or just some of us have really creative imagination and we can create the most beautiful places that we would want to be in. And the Bible is telling us that none of these places are ever close in comparison to heaven's glory. Amen? Heaven is unlike anything you've ever seen. And when you hear of a place like this, your next question is, when can I go see it? Right? I remember when, uh, when I was uh, uh, told of Hawaii, um, I mean, my, I, I got super excited. I was like, well, I mean, when am I ever going to get a chance to go to Hawaii? And so uh, the conference was saying, hey, uh, this is an internship. It's paid for. Um, all you got to do is just go. I was like, oh, I mean, who's going to say no to that, right? It was like a vacation uh, instead of an internship. But I wanted to go. That was my next thing. My next thoughts and my next plans were about going to this place because I'd, I'd heard so much about it. I'd seen so many beautiful pictures of, about it, of it, and I just wanted to see it for myself. And so heaven, with heaven being... Uh, better, way better than any of these places, then our next conscious thought would be, when do we get to see this place? And the Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 16, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first, then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. The Bible is telling us that the time that we will all get to be with the Lord 
will be at the last day. When Jesus comes again, when the trumpet sounds and the dead in Christ are risen and we who are alive are caught up with them in the air to meet him. And he says that after that we will forever be with the Lord. I can't wait for that day to come, friends. I cannot wait for this day to come. And the Bible tells us that it will come very soon. Amen? Uh, Our friend Jamie always used to say that uh, today we are one day closer to that day. Amen? And I, it's always on the fore, forefront of my mind. Just a time when we get to escape all of the destruction in this world. A time where we get to uh, be removed from the, the death and the d- diseases and the, the corruption of this world. I look forward to that day. And the Bible promises us that it is coming. That heaven is not a fairy tale. It is a real place that you can go to, a real place that, uh, that, that, that God has, has written about so that we uh, have something that we can look forward to. And there's this, um, pe- many people say this, uh, that if God is a God of love, then everyone should get to go to heaven. Right? Everyone should get to go to heaven. And the truth is that that is what God wants. God wants everyone to be in that place. When the Bible says that Jesus is going to prepare a place for you, he means everyone, not just me and you. He means everyone. His desire is that everybody will be there. But there's a problem. There's a problem. But before we get to that, let's read this next verse in 2 Peter 3.9. It says, The Lord is not slow in keeping his promises, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. It is God's deepest desire that every single one of us make it to that place. It is God's deepest desire to do everything in his powers to make sure that we all get a chance to know about this place and make a decision to be in this place. It is why God is waiting so patiently, so patiently for those who have not gotten a chance to hear about this wonderful news to finally be able to hear it and make a decision so that they too may be there. Amen? And as, as, as God's children who loves him and whose love is in us, our deepest desire as well should be to ensure that everybody gets to be in this place. No one ever, maybe there are some, but most people that I know would never try ice cream that is so good and not want their friends to also have a taste of it. I remember I was in New York uh, this one time, and I was with a friend, and uh, he uh, was just driving us around and we're just chatting, and then he remembered. He was like, hey, there's this ice cream place that I tried the other day, and I want you to go to go try it as well. It was a mango flavored with other things. And uh, so I was like, why not? And this place was, uh, I think, about 20 minutes um, just uh, from where we were. And so we started driving there. And when we got to that place, unfortunately, they were out of that ice cream that he wanted me to try so bad. But that did not stop him. He went on Google and, and researched, where do they serve this ice cream? And he found another place that was about 30 minutes in the opposite direction. And he was like, we're going there. And I was like, okay, let's do it. And so we went there, and uh, we finally had the ice cream. It was great. I don't think it was as good as he said it was. (laughs) But this was the passion that he had about something that he'd experienced and he just he couldn't rest until I also experienced it. And this should be our experience as well. This should be our desire as well. Just as we have tasted God and his goodness and his mercy and his love, we should desire for the rest of the world to have the same experience. Amen? And that is why we are here. It is the only reason we 
are here. We don't meet up in, in this church uh, to just have a good time with one another and then just go about our business. We come here to be filled. We come here to be reminded of why God has called each one of us. And God has called you and I today to, be, to bear witness of this wonderful, amazing place that God wants everyone to be in one day. But in order for, God, in order for they, uh, them to be in this place, we must allow God to use us to let these people know of this place, to let them know of the God who lives in this place, the God who desires for everyone else to be in this place so that they may make a decision for themselves. God never, never takes pleasure in the death and destruction of the wicked. In Ezekiel, actually, um, uh, 2541, uh, Matthew 2541, let's read this one first. It says, Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed into the eternal fire, prepared for the, the devil and his angels. The Bible is very clear that God does not plan to destroy anyone. The hell which we hear about in the Bible is not intended for any one of us. The Bible is very clear that uh, the destruction of hell is intended for the devil and his angels. And each one of us are destined, each one of us, God desire for us to be in his kingdom. But the thing is, we have a choice to make. In Ezekiel 33, 11, it also says, uh, Say to them, as I live, declares the Lord, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. God does not take pleasure in, any, in watching any one of us die. But he wants for us to spend eternity with him just as he designed it to be from the beginning. But in the book of uh, Joshua 4, uh, 24, 14, the Bible says, Choose this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods of your fathers served in the region beyond the river, or the gods of Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen? Each one of us have a choice. And this is the power that God has bestowed and given to each one of us that comes with a huge risk. And that is why God is a God of love. Because if the person you're with have no choice but to be with you, is that love? It's not. But many of us, most of us, I'm hoping all of us, uh, who have had the experience of being in love with someone, I am hoping that the person you're with has every right and every freedom to walk away if they so choose. That they don't feel like they're chained to you. That they don't feel like they, that they have to be with you. But that it's a choice that they make every day to be with you. And that is the same, same thing with God. He's given us this choice so that we can choose him or not. But his desire is that we choose him. Amen? His desire is that we choose him so that we get to spend eternity with him. Just as he desire as well. And in Revelation 21, as we end this message today, the Bible tells us and And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with men. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. This 
is the ultimate resting place for all of God's children. This is God's deepest desire, friends, for us to one day be in this place. And sometimes what we experience here, God, God desires for us to experience uh, uh, what, it is, what it's like to be in, within his kingdom, even here on earth. But that's not all that he wants for us. Yes, uh, God promises us the Holy Spirit, and with the Holy Spirit comes the fruit of the Spirit, but that's not all that he wants for us, friends. Yes, we, we, we can experience peace from God here on this earth. We can experience joy that comes from him on this earth. We can experience love and be able to share that love with others in this earth. But that's not all he wants for us, because the best is yet to come. And the best that God has for you and I is for us to be reunited back with him. To be together and spend all eternity at his feet. Just hearing the wonderful stories of salvation. Hearing the wonderful stories of, of, of the lengths that he went to to save you and I. Hearing the wonderful stories of how he, he delivered all of us from uh, so much tragedies. Hearing of his love, his, his goodness, his mercy for all eternity. And the Bible says that we will never get tired of hearing it. And so I pray, and it is my desire, that you choose to be in this place that God has, uh, uh, has made for you. He says that in my father's house has many rooms. There's so many rooms in his, ho in his house. And the reason why is because he intends for all of us to be there. So I pray that uh, you choose to claim your room in that house that God is making for you today. And as we leave this place, I pray that we tell others as well that God has a room for them in a house that he is creating just for them. That there's a room for each one of God's children. Even those that don't know him yet. His intent and his desire is that they come to know him. The God who would do anything and the God who did everything to ensure that they have a chance at eternal life. As uh, the praise and worship team come up and sing the final song, closing song, Marching to Zion, I encourage all of us to think on this place, to ask ourselves whether or not we want to be in this place, because I do. And it is my prayer and my hope that you as well choose to be in this place where God wants to be with you just as he was always his intent from the beginning.